Welcome to HeVoices.com, the greater reflection of you. I'm Bobby Marvin, and I'm here with artist Poncho Brown. What's going on, Poncho? Hello, hello. How you doing, Mr. Marvin? Everything I'm all is right. Great. Awesome, man. We're here at your new studio, man. You made a change. You uh, made a transition. Tell us, tell us about that. What made you decide to relocate? Well, you know, um, I've had uh, maybe five or six studios here in Baltimore. Uh, my last significant studio was the Holland Street Exchange, which burned down in 1995. And so I initially had to start business all over again uh, after 1995. So I've had two studios since then. This one is, is much more manageable than my last studio space, which was about 3,000 square feet in uh, northwest Baltimore. I uh, was there for about maybe 12 or 13 years and decided I needed to down phase and really start to simplify how I was trying to do what I was doing. That's, that's been my whole thing. I've always had a studio here in the Baltimore area. Though. How long have you been uh, practicing art? I've been a professional artist going on 32 years. So I got my first job assignment actually uh, as a, as a, um, in high school, my first year. Um, car, I went to Carver Vocational Technical High School in the city. I studied commercial art when I went to the, um, Carver. Um, they had a three-year program where you would learn lettering, composition, and all that kind of stuff. So normally, you would get work study in the 12th grade, and I learned it in three months. So I was the first 10th grader to get work study. So that just opened a whole, a whole echelon of information because I started meeting other entrepreneurs that had their own businesses, and I actually got assigned to a gentleman here in town who had his own sign business. So that, that was my indoctrination into entrepreneurship because I knew all these people that pretty much left high school and started business. And that was my foundation. Let's talk about that for a moment, Poncho. I always say that artists like musicians and visual artists and dancers, you know, particularly artists and uh, visual artists and, and musicians, you guys have it the hardest because it's, it's not like, you know, your own... Uh, restaurant or barber shop where you know people gonna be drawn to your food or or you know, getting a haircut you have to create the product by hand and push it and convince people to buy it well, and to hustle talk about your business and your line of work well and you said that's the difference but to me it's the same I still create in what I do, just like the baker will create what he does. Um, you still got to create and present it in packages. So all I'm saying is that whatever talent you have, there's ways to manage it. You can even do it as a hobby. You can say, I'm going to survive off of it. But once you make the determination to survive off of whatever that is, I don't care what it is, then there's some other pieces of the puzzle you got to add to it. So the thing I learned being at Carver was these guys were hustlers. We use that term a lot, and it's not a derogatory term, but these are folks that were entrepreneurs that had to hustle their business. That's where the word came from. They had, if they did TV repair, they had to go hustle down people that had broken TVs. If I, if I was a sign painter, which was my training, I had to go and find people that had signs that needed to be painted. And I was a, a hustler. For example, I would walk past a, a, a Chinese restaurant, which most people argue because there's a Chinese restaurant there. I would walk by and say, hey, you know, I was outside. What's, what's the name of your shop? Uh, and they couldn't even tell me. I said, well, you know, I know a guy that can come back and paint those signs for you and clean that up for you. Then send them by tomorrow. I would show up with my letter and brushes and knock that sign out. That was the hustle that I had with the, the talent and the, and the tools that I got from that uh, vocational school. So, but I look at everybody's talent the same way. Even writers got to promote what they do. And so, me as a visual artist, it's not harder. It's actually a little easier for me. And so, I had to learn how to incorporate those other tools into what I was doing to make my artwork. So when you decided to make the decision to be a professional artist, describe the steps and, and, and what were some of the challenges in the beginning? Well, when most students talk to me, they'll find that I'm already, already always simplifying. So the transition to being a professional isn't complicated. The moment you accept a check for your talent, you are a professional. <laughs> You've already broke through the line. So you can call yourself amateur all you want. The moment someone pays you for your service or whatever that is you do, you've made the transition. You just have to be aware of that transition. You have to validate yourself rather than accepting and expecting other people to validate where you are. So um, I became a professional artist with the first portrait I did where they hand me the money for the picture. And then after that, I said, well, duplication. How many other people's portraits can I do? 
How many other signs can I do? That's the beginning of making the transition right there when you can believe in your talent and learn other ways to market. Did you always have the idea of that, you know, I want to be an artist managing, operating my own company? Or is this something that you say, okay, here's my first one. All right, let me just keep on going so because I, I have bills to pay. What pay? Was it always a vision of yours to have your own? No, it wasn't. And it, it first started from having clients. And in order to do whatever you want to do to, to make that money, you have to groom a couple of clients that will come to you periodically and say, hey, can you do a flyer for me? Hey, can you do a logo for me? And I eventually started doing that, and I started realizing, well, the more people I lined up, then I would have a steady stream of income. So that was the, the, the really the platform. That was the, 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 the schematic for me making the transition to ultimately wanting a company. I don't think anybody said, well, I want to want a company. The ones that do don't ever do it because they dream it. I think you are the company. You got to say, hey, this is my talent. This is how I'm going to utilize it. And then you got to utilize it. That's, the, that's the, the skeleton of being a business person. You know, some of us are groomed for Some of us aren't. Some of us are groomed to go get a job. I, I was never cut from that fabric. Okay. All right. And what was your experience when you first went out? Uh, you had your degree from MICA, a uh, very prestigious art institute. What was your experience going out and getting a job? My experience was negative. Even going to Micah was negative. I went to an all-black school my whole life, went to a white school, a predominantly white school and foreign school student body. I also was uneducated. I went to a vocational high school. We went to trade one half of the day, academics the other half of the day. So I was really a neophyte. I, under, I didn't understand how anything worked. And the only, thing that, only reason why I went to college was because I got a few scholarships from high school. They called my name like four times during graduation for these scholarships. And I really had my own conception of what a scholarship was. So I, I got, you know, groomed to go to college kind of backwards. And by the time I got there, that's when I realized what the real deal was. So, I mean, I, I just feel like there's a progression. Um, I, I still pinpoint my high school education being very crucial because when I was introduced into entrepreneurship, um, when I went to college, it got a chance to hone my skills and realize what I had learned in high school because that actually helped me. But I found out that I, my reading level was behind. Here I was, an 85, 90 student in Baltimore City Schools. Go to college, they put me in English 101. I'm like, how can you put me in English 101? When in That's the only language I speak. <laughs> but it was that was my transition, was trying to get caught up and balanced. And if it wasn't for my education in high school where... My academic class at the Maryland Institute came second nature to me because of what I learned in high school. And my entrepreneurial uh, experience that I got from being in that environment, oh, tremendously helped me. Because while students were getting money from their parents to go to school, I was paying signs. All right. Uh, last question. What advice would you give to not only an artist starting out, but anyone with ambitions of being an entrepreneur? Work, work. I meet too many dreamers. Dreamers are people that say what they're going to do and never do it. I'm the kind of person, if you say you want to do this, you, you, you take your time, you take it out of your head, and you write it down first. This is what my plan is. And then you, if you, you start plugging it in. You start building, duplicating what works, and really casting aside what don't work. It's a, it's, a, it's a momentum that you gain. And then after a while, when you get that momentum, you can relax and hit whatever pace you want. But that's a crucial step. Most people talk themselves out of doing whatever they say they want to do long before they start. Um, it, it, re it really comes to tapping into who you think you are. Um, practice makes perfect, so nobody wants to practice anymore. We're in an immediate gratification society now. So you got a lot of folks that don't even put in the time. I've drawn every day of my life since I was four years old. A lot of people can't say that. They can look at my successes go, hey, well, you're blessed. It's God-given talent, but that erases how much time I've actually committed to doing what I've done. I'm very committed to what I do. Thank you for your time, Poncho. Appreciate Quite it. Well. And thank you for watching HeVoices.com, the greater reflection of you.